Hey, what's up portrait photographers? In this RPT review, I'm gonna take a look at this software and see if it's right for you, as well as give you a quick tutorial on how to use it. Considering the high price tag of about $300 a year, it's pretty expensive. So we need to see if it's uh, worth it if you wanna go ahead and buy it, especially considering there's already Luminar Neo with the uh, portrait uh, settings. So let's get started. So right now I have the interface in front of me of Aperti with a few photos that I took here. You can see the thumbnails. I'm going to go to the project section and just show you that the Aperti, it organizes photos through projects similar to collections or albums. And I'm going to click on this project right here. These are the two photos that I'm going to edit in this Aperti tutorial. These photos are raw files or raw photos that I took with my iPhone 12 Pro at the ProFusion Expo in uh, Toronto. And these images or these files will be available to download on my website, so make sure to check the uh, description. And as you can see, there's already an issue with rendering this photo. You can see it's not processing correctly. If I zoom in and zoom out, it looks fine now. So that's another issue with Aperti. While I was testing the software, I did notice a few hiccups. I feel like it's been rushed, the software, to uh, pump it out. For example, I'm just going to make a simple change. Let's say I'm just going to add a lot of contrast. And just to give you an example, I'm going to show you the before and after of this image. So I like this slider here, the before and after. But one thing it doesn't have, or at least I couldn't find, is the image compare where I can see the original on the left and the edited on the right. So it kind of sucks. The only other option I can do is click on this. So there's a few things that are missing that I would like to see in Aperti, especially considering the price. And I'll just revert this to the original photo. Another thing is right here, these are the presets. You can save your presets if you want. And there's also a few built-in ones. And right off the bat, you can see this retouch right here. It's, it's cut off and I'm not too sure if it's due to the resolution or not, but I can't like scroll to the right or I can't increase the panel right here. So that's like another thing I noticed. Anyways, here are the presets by Julia Trotti. She was involved in the development of Aperti. So I'll just click on, let's say this natural radiance. It does take a few seconds to process, I guess due to the AI involvement in the preset. So you can see right off the bat, it removed the dark circles. So here's the before and after. I'll just get rid of this preview. Another thing I can do is I can go to Tangerine Glow. And if I want, I could change the strength of the preset and just decrease it. Another one I liked was this makeup one here. This one looked pretty good. It does a little bit of a color grade and gives a little bit more of a vintage look. You can see the green's been changed on the sweater. Anyways, let me reset this photo here. And let me show you the meat and potatoes of Aperti. So I'm gonna first crop this photo. Go to the crop tool here. Go to free. Just get rid of some of this background noise or background objects, I should say, or disturbances. This is not the greatest crop, but I just want to show you how it looks. Okay, and one thing Aperity doesn't seem to do is it doesn't like increase the details or sharpness or increase or upscale the image. Maybe it's possible on the export, but no, it doesn't look like it. If I go to long edge, yeah, I think it's possible to increase the size, but I don't know. I'm not too sure if it'll do a good job. Usually for increasing or upscaling an image, especially if I crop it, I usually use Topaz Photo AI. I'll leave a link in the description below. But anyways, going back to this photo here, we have the masking here, and then we have the essentials. I'll get rid of the masking. I don't think I need masking for this photo. And these are just basic adjustments that are available in nearly almost every photography software, including your Android or iPhone. But the best part here is the retouching tool. So it automatically selects the face or masks the face. And then I can start cleaning this image up. So I can remove some of the blemishes. 
And you can see, let me see the before and after. So it's just a slight improvement. You can see these marks right here have been reduced. So that looks pretty good. I would like to see it reduced more unless it's recognizing it as a freckles. So let me see here. And then the other thing I can do is actually it's not recognizing it as freckles, so that's fine. I can try to add more detail to the skin or sharpness, but it's not really required in this photo. What I need to do is upscale it actually. As I was mentioning, I usually use Photo AI for that. And I'm going to use some skin smoothing right here. So the skin looks smoother. Let's see the before and after, before and after. So it's very subtle. I'll just put it all the way to 100 to see if you can see the before and after. And let me uncheck the skin smoothing. Here's the before and after. Yeah, so I could see a subtle improvement. You may need to watch this tutorial in full screen or full view. Then there's like the face skin color correction. So make slight color grading adjustments to the skin. And here's the big one, dark circle removal. So that did a pretty good job. Face brighten, I don't really need it on this photo. And then there's shine removal. So if I move the shine removal all the way to the right, you can see it's been removed on the nose. I'll show you the before and after. That looks good. Then there's the iris visibility. While I was testing this, this is a hit or a miss. For example, if I want to change it to blue, uh, it did a pretty good job selecting the eyes, but there's also a little bit of the black or dark brown in the iris. Or, yeah, in the iris. So it's a hit or a miss. So I'll just stick it on original. And then there's this iris visibility. Usually it makes it sharper, but it's hard to tell with this image. Then there's the iris flare. It just increases the little dot right there. But usually I'm not a big fan of the iris flare. Oh, it's actually here, right here and here. But I don't need that. Redness removal, eye whitening. So this one, this tool is pretty good. It does reduce or increase the brightness of the eyes and reduces the redness. I can also reduce the redness with this. Let's see the before and after. So it's a very subtle change. And then there's this eye enhancement, which looks like it adds a little bit more sharpening to the eyes. Then there's teeth whitening. If the mouth is partially closed, the teeth whitening doesn't always work. So you can see a little bit of the teeth, but it won't work in this case. It doesn't work very well, teeth brightening, because it's selecting the lips as well. So that's fine. So I'll just keep it at zero. This is pretty good. This person already has makeup on, but I can like add more and just overcook it. You can see the before and after. So I'll just reset this because I don't need makeup. And this changes the contour, the shape of the makeup right here. You could add eyeliner if you want. Let's see the before and after. Okay, just give me a second. I gotta put a glow to this. So here's another hiccup. It doesn't look like the eyeliner is working very well. It usually adds it around here. Yeah, so that's like another issue with Aperti. Like all these tools, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's like a hit or a miss. Because I was testing this eyeliner tool earlier. I'm not too sure if it was this photo or not. Or maybe because this person already has eyeliner that, it, that it's not adding it. So that could be the reason why. But anyways, let me just reset this. Okay, and then there's the lips. I can add more saturation to it. And I can change the tone a little bit. 
take a look at the before and after of the lips. Yeah, so it's a subtle, actually it's a very noticeable change. If I want, I can make it darker as well. Let's see the before and after. It's slightly a little bit darker. Yeah, so that's pretty much it for the retouching tool. I can also rechange or reshape the face, make it slimmer, and then change the eye shape if I want. Can give it that like anim look or that K pop or co cosplay look if I want to change the shape of the eyes and just increase it. Let's see the before and after. Yeah. The eyes look fine like that, maybe around like 10. That looks good. And then I can change the shape of the nose if I would like. And then there's the mouth and the body. These are pretty easy to use. And overall, it's a pretty good software. It does still have a lot of hiccups, but the price is incredibly insane at $300. Anyways, I'm just going to reset this. And I'm going to go to this photo right here. And I'll leave the crop as it is. Let me see if I actually cropped it earlier. This is the original, so that looks fine. I'm going to hide this thumbnail. I'm just going to make a few minor adjustments to this photo first. I'm going to decrease the highlights, decrease the whites. It's a little bit too bright here. I'll go to the Curve tool. And I'll just move it to the left, this curve. Just make it look a little bit better. So already this image looks a lot better just with minor adjustments, I believe. Even though the white balance is off, I still like this color. I can put a little bit more blue into this. And what I'm going to show you is probably the best tool in Aperti. It's this creative tool right here where you can do some pretty good stuff with the lighting. So here's this light source I have right here. I'm going to show it on the canvas and it's not doing anything right now. So I have to increase the amount. And now you can see how it's highlighting the face or the body here. However, the best way to use this is with this light contrast tool. It does take a little bit of practice to use it. And one thing I noticed was with this, a lot of these tools, especially the light control, I couldn't find a user guide available on the Aperti or the Skyline website. So I think that still needs to be updated. But anyways, with this light source setting and this light contrast, what I can do is like give it like, like, a, like a studio box or like a softbox type of shot to this image. Even though there was a softbox when I took it, I can mimic it or I can change it around. So that looks pretty cool. What I can do also is I can add another light source. I can change the hue. I can change the saturation. Let me change the hue to like a magenta color. Maybe pink. And then I can play around with it and just give it a different type of look. Actually, I'll put it to blue. Increase the saturation. Let's see the before and after. So you can do some really cool stuff with these light source tools in addition with the light contrast if you want to put like more focus or less focus on your subject. And other than that, like you can also pay, play around with the light source and then you can start masking it and do some really creative stuff with it. But let's see what else we have. We have the portrait bokeh. Let's see. I'll just add a little bit of bokeh. I need to correct this light contrast. It looks a little bit overcooked. And go to this white one here and decrease it here. This one, I'll increase it. So now you can see a little bit more of that blue. I'll increase the light contrast. Decrease the amount of the blue. Give it a different type of look. Now the color balance is off, but you guys know what I'm saying. Let me change the depth. There's also this light customization where you can do like different type of light shapes into stri strips or dots and change the size of them if you want. 
Let me go to this amount and just decrease it. This one I will increase a little bit. That looks good. And then we have the traditional LUTs, full and green. There's also the high key lights. This already has enough lighting. Usually if you're using the light source here and the light contrast, you probably don't need to use the high key. So that's pretty much it for this Aperture review. The main tools that you want to take a look at or, or check out is this retouching tool, this reshaping tool, and this creative tool and the light sources. And like these tools work and they're really good, but at $299 a year, I think it's more, the software is more for like professional photographers or for a studio that need to save on time on processing because you can do a lot of this in Capture One or Lightroom or even Photoshop and you can get a perpetual license for Capture One or pay like 120 bucks a year for, for Lightroom Classic and Photoshop. So what do you guys think? Do you think the software is worth it? And, or would you rather just stick with uh, Luminar Neo? I'm gonna do a comparison with Aperti versus Luminar Neo in another video. So make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And as always, live easy, sleep breezy, and stay lovely.